The Marian Awareness Apostolate wants to express his gratitude and loyalty to the Holy Catholic Mother Church for the following awards bestowed on it. 1. The Papal Award of Honor bestowed on the Marian Awareness Apostolate by the Vatican on the recommendation of West African bishops at the Catholic Institute of West Africa, Port Harcourt, November 24, 2010. The Camp Lagos Eidarsison Award by the Social Communication Department of the Eidarsis of Lagos. 3. The African Catholic Media Practitioners Award, Signis 2011, presided over by three Catholic bishops in Abuja. The Marian Awareness Apostolate is determined to continue to serve the Church in whatever capacity it is called to do so. The Marian Awareness Apostolate, truth is hard, but truth is truth. The Marian Awareness Apostolate, obedience in all things but sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and I shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O Lord, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom, pray for us. Our Lady, Mother of Salvation, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Marian Awareness Apostolate invites you to enjoy the full power of the precious blood devotion practiced by Christians since the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. This devotion came to full bloom with the missionaries of the most precious blood founded by the only officially recognized apostle of the precious blood in the Catholic Church, St. Caspar del Bofolo, based in Italy, Rome. This community is still serving the church in 20 countries all over the world. In 1849, Father William Faber, D.D., nurtured the devotion to a confraternity. In 1863, God raised Reverend Mother Catherine Aurelia to found the institute called Sisters Adorers of the Most Precious Blood. The institute was approved by Rome in 1896. These are the only officially church-approved precious blood apostolates in the world. Heaven has, however, refused a part of the devotion to other visionaries around the world since then. The United Hearts Apostolate in Illyria, USA, the two Patricks of Ireland, and a Nigerian Precious Blood Visionary. The Marian Awareness Apostolate invites you to enjoy the full fruits of all these efforts by heaven to arm you with the power of the most precious blood of Jesus Christ with this book, The Comprehensive Prayers of the Most Precious Blood of Our Lord Jesus Christ, a compilation of the powerful prayers both old and new of the various precious blood devotions. Arm yourself with this powerful book and protect yourself in these terrible evil days. All prayers come from God and go to God. The church permits anyone to compile any prayers of the church for public use. Let no one stop you from using these powerful prayers, the comprehensive prayers of the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Contact the Marian Awareness Apostolate, 65B Femi and Yotuga Crescent, Adilabu Street, Surulere, Lagos, Nigeria. Telephone 080-333-99992. Your salvation is now in your hands. The Marian Awareness Apostolate. Truth is hard, but truth is truth. The Marian Awareness Apostolate. Obedience in all things but sin. Hello. We thank all of you for your very encouraging telephone calls and SMSs. These are very encouraging. They sort of propel us to try to do more research so we can share more with you the truths of the Christian and indeed Catholic faith. For the past couple of days, well, weeks, we've been trying to tell you about the events of the end times as revealed by heaven in www.thewarningsecondcoming.com. I'd advise you to make this um, website your friend, your daily elixir as it were. And don't go anywhere until you've read the messages of the day. Once you're doing this, then you'll be abreast of how heaven is seeing things and how heaven is equipping you to cope with what is happening at this time. Now, we know that evil is everywhere now. There's so much evil everywhere. The evil one has singled out Christians and Catholics for attack. 
the first thing he wants to do is to remove the faith from them. Once the faith is removed through all kinds of liberalized profanations which are excused in the guise of modernism, then he, they are like sitting dogs to him and he can pretty well pick them up as he wishes. So there's so much evil in the world now. Now in this message which was given to us by our Blessed Mother Mary on September 25th, 2012, Our Lady tells us that there are three ways to protect ourselves in these days from evil. Let's go into the messages, then we shall try to, well, go through each of the references one by one. Our Lady says, My dearly beloved daughter, you must never become complacent and feel that this work, when it seems to be going well, will for one moment escape the scourge of the evil one. He is furious. He picks at every task you undertake, creates problems and obstacles which leave you frustrated and helpless. Well, that is very true nowadays. If you want to do anything for God, be ready to face some difficulties. Now we know uh, Marian Awareness, for example, comes under all kinds of attack. Even from those who ask you to burn our books, this blasphemous action is actually excused in the guise of this, this, and that. Nobody is asking what's in the books you're asking people to burn. If it is word of God, then you condemn yourself by asking people to burn it. And unless you can show there's some error in it, then you are condemning yourself unless you repent very, very hard. So the work of God is a difficult one. No, God never promised you a rose garden. He said that anything that happened to him, Jesus I mean, will also happen to you because a disciple cannot be greater than his master. He says, if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. So do not expect in this day and age that if you are working for God in any way, you're going to be free from all kinds of persecution, libel, slander, you know, all, all kinds of things will be done to you. But never mind, push on ahead. The only person whose opinion matters as far as you're concerned is God. Nobody else's opinion matters. So con continue, plunge on, and do your work. The second part of the message, our lady says, so many people are blind to the scourge the evil one inflicts of humanity. Because they cannot see him, they do not believe that he exists. Those who open the way to him through sin and allow him into their souls will find it impossible to rid themselves of the terrible hurt and discontent he will bring to their lives. Everybody is blind to the activities of the devil because the devil himself have, has made it to look as if he does not exist. This is one way he gets to people. There's this strange concept that people are civilized and because they are civilized, there is no good or embodiment of good or embodiment of evil. Everything is like how you see it, is relative. This is not so. These liberalists and modernists did not create the world. The one who created it was the one that said in the Bible that he saw Satan heard from heaven. And the Bible says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the devil has come. So the devil does exist and he makes you believe he doesn't. This day there's so many things that have been confused. Bad is now made to look good. Everything terrible is now made to be attractive. And this is done with such subtlety even from little cartoons. Terrible ideas are sold in cartoons with children in by. By the time they grow up to be adults, they do not know the difference between good and evil anymore. Everything is now blurred. With all this strange, false Christianity going around, nobody is asking you how to avoid sin. They ask, they teach you how to excuse sin because they tell you God loves you so much that you cannot keep God's laws anyway, that you are not living in a period of grace, so therefore you are not capable of sinning. All the lies which Satan gives you. The Bible itself is the one that tells us that anyone who says he's not a sinner is a liar. And we're told in the scriptures that the prayers of a sinner are an abomination unto God. That means God will not hear the prayers of a sinner. And by the time you're in mortal serious sin, you are 
the abode of the evil one and his agents. So they enter you, they possess you, they control your thinking, your desires, whatever you want. They milk your heart strong so that you cannot hear the words of God. That's when that you open yourself to him and it brings so much sorrow and hardship into your life. Now the hardship you may bring might not be in terms of material things. People always think that when you're rich, you have everything you want, that God is blessing you. They forget that all that too can come from the devil, so they, it can win your soul. Look at all the musicians who have sold themselves to the devil in order to have fame or fortune. Look at a lot of the footballers who have sold their soul to the devil to become famous footballers and to have fame and fortune. When you have fame and fortune, it's not mean that God, that's a, a sign of God's blessing. It's not to say if you have money or you, have, you can afford the means to do things that it's not from God. It can't be from God. But don't forget, most of the time, the evil one will give you this stupendous wealth. As he said to Jesus, say, look, obey me and all this will be yours. And a lot of people sell their souls to the devil in order to have fame and fortune. This is what is happening in our world. And nothing good can come out of their mouths. This is why you see a lot of the music is evil. A lot of the films are evil because these people have sold themselves to the devil. They can't have any lyrics that please or glorify God. And all these sort of things are happening because they, have, they are living in perpetual mortal sin. And so nothing good can come from them. And once you're in this state, you're in the hands of the evil one. He manipulates you. He does things. He decides your taste, your likes, and your style of life. All he does. Once you're in sin, until you break away from sin, then the Holy Spirit would fill you and tell you how to live a good life. So the problem we have is all this false Christianity floating around. You're not taught how to avoid sin anymore, but to live with sin. And once you're living sin, you're, the Satan is inhabiting you. There's no two ways about it. That's why Jesus says, it's either you're for me or you're against me. There's no, I'm not so good, I'm not so bad. Jesus is not interested in that. He says in the book of Revelations, I will spew out the lukewarm from my mouth. So choose for God. Go to confession, confess your sins, so the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And then he will inspire you to do good things, both for yourself and for God. And for you to do things that will generally make your way to heaven more secure. So our lady is saying, when you let Satan rule you because you are in constant mortal sin, whew, then sorry, there's nothing God can do for you. You must make the effort to stay out of sin, to make, have a good confession, and to avoid sin in future. Our Lord says, there are only three ways to protect yourselves from the evil one. First is the sacrament of confession, which cleanses your soul if you are genuine in your remorse. For non-Catholics, please accept the gift of the plenary indulgence in crusade prayer 24 given to the world through this mission. Now, Catholics must constantly go to confession because Catholics believe what Jesus said in the scriptures. Whatever sins the apostles forgive are forgiven. So we go to our priest for confession. Non-Catholics, however, who do not believe, God is now mercifully giving them the crusade prayer number 24. That if you say this crusade prayer number 24 for seven consecutive days, you'll be forgiven your sins. So let us now give you that crusade prayer number 24. Our Lord said, my army through their love of me will be given special graces now. They must say this prayer for seven consecutive days and they'll be given the gift of total absolution and the power of the Holy Spirit. Here is a prayer. O oh my Jesus, you are the light of the earth. You are the flame that touches all souls. Your mercy and love knows no bounds. We are not worthy of the sacrifice you made by your death on the cross. Yet we know that your love for us is greater than the love we hold for you. Grant us, O oh Lord, the gift of humility so that we are deserving of your new kingdom. Fill us with the Holy Spirit so we can march forth and lead your army to proclaim the truth of your holy word and to prepare our brothers and sisters 
for the glory of your second coming on earth. We honor you, we praise you, we offer ourselves, our sorrows, our sufferings as a gift to you to save souls. We love you, Jesus. Have mercy on all your children, wherever they may be. Amen. That is the absolution prayer for non-Catholics to say in reparation for sin and for the cleansing of sin so that you'll be free to carry out the call that God has given all of us to spread these messages around the world. And we have this little prayer card that has that prayer in it as, long as, the, as well as the seal of the living God prayer. So this prayer card, if you want it, please do not hesitate to call us or write us. We'll be glad to send it to you. So the first condition, our Lord says to those who truly want to save their souls is first the sacrament of confession, the cleansing of your soul from sin. The second way is through the daily devotion to my mother who has been given the power to crush Satan. Her holy rosary is an important shield which will cover you and your family away from his evil eye. You see, the importance of the rosary again. Our Lord keeps stressing the importance of the family recitation of the Holy Rosary, or indeed the private recitation of the Holy Rosary. Our Lord says when you say the rosary, you will drive the evil one away, and you will be protected. The rosary is like a shield that will protect you and your family. So, the three ways our Lord said that you can protect yourself from the evil one, first, confession, cleansing of the soul, secondly, the recitation of the rosary. Now, when we say this, sometimes people say, well, I'm not Catholic, I'm not Catholic, so um, I don't believe in the rosary, or I don't have to say it. God did not make you a non-Catholic. You made yourself a non-Catholic. God would talk to those children of his in a way to save them. And there's only one way. There are not two ways. God is not going to deal with one as Catholics and another as non-Catholic. The only way God has designed to save is the only way he has designed, whether you accept it or not. Now, heaven is saying you must say the Holy Rosary in order to protect yourself and your loved ones. Now, all these shenanigans about whether I believe or not will come to an end when the examination, the illumination, the warning happens. When the warning happens, people will see the stark truth and all they've ever believed or not believed will be so plain to them. Then they will see that the rosary is one of the most powerful prayers God has ever given to man and that the power of the rosary is awesome as has been proved in history over many centuries. Our Lord Jesus is saying, the second way to protect yourself from evil in this day is the recitation of the Holy Rosary. Now, if you want to know how to say the Rosary, you're not a Catholic, you want to know, please don't hesitate once again to get in touch with us. We'll send you little books and rosaries if you wish. Please save yourselves. Then, our Lord says, the last is through the state of grace which you can achieve through regular communication with me by receiving me in the Holy Eucharist. So, the last weapon to stay away from evil is to be regular at Holy Communion. Now, to be regular at Holy Communion means you have to receive Holy Communion properly with due honor and respect to Jesus who is present there. Jesus is fully and totally present in the Holy Eucharist in a properly celebrated Mass with properly used consecration prayers and Jesus is there so you receive him with honor and awe you receive him in your mouth kneeling down from a priest only this is the best way to receive Holy Communion the popes have said it if anybody says anything else is up to them but we know the best and proper way to receive Holy Communion is from a duly consecrated priest whose hands have been purified during ordination by the Holy Spirit to contain the purity of God. Just like our Blessed Mother Mary was purified by the Holy Spirit at the Immaculate Conception so that her womb could contain the purity of God. The same thing that a priest's hands are purified during ordination 
so that his hands can contain the purity of God. So as Marians, we are advised by our Lord Jesus and his blessed mother to receive Holy Communion from a consecrated hand, kneeling down and in the mouth. When you do this, you have the fullness of the blessings of the presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Now, people may argue about this, argue about that. That is their own. We follow the traditions of the church and we obey heaven. Holy Communion, properly received, kneeling down, not in your hands. Holy Communion in the hand is a mortal sin, no matter who tells you. St. Augustine said so. St. Thomas Aquinas said so. Cardinal Manning said so. All the doctors of the church have said so. And the doctors cannot change now. Communion in the hand is a mortal sin. So please receive communion from a duly ordained priest, kneeling down and in your mouth. This way, you will receive the fullness of the graces Jesus has prepared for you in every Holy Communion. May the power of Jesus in the precious blood and in the host defend the truth of what I'm saying in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, our Lord says, so many people who want to escape from the clutches of Satan, who in their hearts know they have been sucked into a vortex of evil, must turn to me and ask me to help them through this precious crusade prayer 78. So our Lord is now giving us another crusade prayer, number 78, to save ourselves from the clutches of Satan. From the clutches of Satan. Don't forget, in this message, our Lord is telling us how to keep away from evil. And he has given us that this is the fourth remedy. The first remedy is to go to confession, if you're a Catholic, or to say the crusade prayer 24, in www.theoneisecondcoming.com messages. The crusade prayers are there. Second, the recitation of the rosary. Third, the reception of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist with honor, love, and reverence. Now, after all that, then the crusade prayer number 78. And the prayer goes, O oh Jesus, protect me from the power of Satan. Take me into your heart as I release all my legions to him and his wicked ways. I surrender my will and come before you on my knees with a humble and contrite heart. I leave my life in your holy hands. Save me from evil. Release me and take me to your safe haven of protection now and forever. Amen. So you say that prayer every day and then you have accomplished or you know, done the four things required now for you to stay from evil. Evil is so much around us. You can't, you, you, you can't get anywhere and then not meet evil these days. Because in these last days, Satan is coming out with such vengeance. Why? Because he knows his time is short. He doesn't have time anymore, so he is like employing his last arsenals, weapons as it were, to win souls for himself. While God too, God has finished his children with graces and the means to protect themselves if only they will accept these means. One of this is Crusade Prayer 78, the one we've just said. Again, you can call us or write us. We can send you these prayers or you go onto that website and you can get the prayers, Crusade Prayers yourselves. Not only that, there are other Crusade Prayers that our Lord is asking all of us now to say every day to cover a whole range of evils the devil has planned to unleash on the world. The one world government, one world religion, one world leadership, and all the laws against God, laws that will allow homosexuality, abortion, and all the wicked things, all these laws are coming. And a lot of us will be helpless when they come because some people in the hierarchy will be used to promote these laws and excuse them, and they will be confused. So these days, you need to protect yourself from evil. So let's go through the four things Jesus has told us to do in order to be free from evil. Once again, one, confession and cleansing of ourselves from sin regularly. For non-Catholics, Crusade Prayer 24, which we told you. Second, the recitation of the rosary daily, in group or alone. Sometimes reciting this rosary aloud drives away the devil. Then third, 
always in being in a state of grace to receive Holy, Holy Communion with love, reverence, and awe. Jesus truly present in the Holy Eucharist. And fourth, Crusade Prayer number 78. Save me, Lord, from the clutches of the devil. Please check out this website. I will be glad to assist you. Our numbers and everything is on the screen. Do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.